So hi again, I'm your future teacher Lucelle Blaise J. Tesserero from BPED 1A UC Maine. So for today's content, I'm going to be sharing you about Edward L. Thorndike's theory. But first, who is Edward L. Thorndike? So here it is. So Edward Thorndike is an American pioneer in comparative psychology. Thorndike was born on August 31, 1874 in Williamsburg and died on August 9, 1949. He completed his PhD in 1898 in Columbia University. Wow! And he was awarded the doctorate of, the, of his thesis, which is the Animal Intelligence and Experimental Studies of the Association Processes of Animals. And he concluded that the experimental approach is the only way to understand learning, so he established his famous law of effect. And he became an instructor of psychology at teacher education at Columbia University. Studying human learning, education, and mental testing and remain in Columbia for the rest of his life. Thorne Dykes is the only social scientist to head the professional organization. He retired in 1939 but worked actively until his death in 1949. So now let's proceed to Thorne Dykes Connecticism Theory. So what is Thorne Dykes Connecticism Theory? If you like to know, please continue watching. The learning theory of Thorndike represents the original SR framework of behavioral psychology. It says here, learning is the result of association forming between stimuli and responses. Such associations like habit become strengthened or weakened by the nature. The paradigm for SR theory was trial and error learning in which certain responses come to dominate others due to reward. The hallmark of connecticism was that learning could be adequately explained without referring to any unobservable internal state. There are three laws of learning. First, the law of readiness or law of action tendency, which means that learning takes place when, it, when an action tendency arouses through preparatory adjustments, set, or attitude. For short, readiness is a preparation for action. If one is not prepared to learn, learning cannot be automatically instilled in him. In order to learn, we must be prepared. The second one is the law of exercise. The law of exercise has two parts. First, the law of use and the law of disuse. This law stated that connection is stronger when used, where strength is defined as vigor and duration as well as the frequency of its making and grow weaker when it is not used. Many examples of this case is found in the case of human learning. Learning to drive, singing, typewriting, or etc. needs exercise and repetition of movement. The last one is the law of effect, which states that responses which occur just prior to a satisfying state of affairs are more likely to be repeated and responses is just prior to an annoying state of affair, affair are not likely to be, repeat, to be repeated. The second contribution was his rejection of the notion that man is simply another animal that can reason. Here is the example of Thorndike's puzzle box. Thorndike's puzzle box. The graph demonstrates the general decreasing trends of the cat's response time which, with each successive trial. The situation involves not just the cat's location but also the stimuli it is exposed to. For example, the hunger and the desire for freedom. The cat recognizes the inside of the box, the bars, and the lever and remembers that it needs to do to produce the correct response. Additional law and principles of Thorndike's learning theory First, multiple response and varied reaction. When you face a problem, an animal will try one response after another until it finds access to solve a puzzle. She, should, she or he should try different ways to solve it than doing the same way without any improvement. Second additional law is set or attitude, which learning is guided by the total 
set or attitude of organism, which determines not only what the person will do, but what will satisfy or annoy him. Third is the partial activity or prepotency of elements. According to this law, the learning reacts effectively depending on the situation and, neg and neglects the other functions which are not important or may be irrelevant. The fourth one is the law of response by analogy. The individual make use of the old experience while trying to learn a new situation. The last one is the associative shifting. According to this law, we may get a response of which a learner is capable associated with any other situation to which he is sensitive. Thorn Dice illustrated this by the act of teaching a cat to stand up by your command. So that's it for this vlog. I hope you learned something from my discussion. And please hit the like, comment, and share this video. So that's it. Thank you for watching. And see you on my next vlog. Bye!